Ticks are popping up all over Michigan and it, gaining a foothold in areas where people used to feel safe. It makes me think twice, right? And that's forcing researchers to get creative in finding them and the diseases they carry. Dr. McGeorge joins us with how a bug the size of a sesame seed is really threatening us when we head outdoors. Doc. Yeah. That's exactly right, Karen and Jason. You know, 20 years ago in our area, ticks were really just a nuisance because they didn't carry many dangerous diseases. But that has changed drastically. And now ticks that carry Lyme disease and other serious illnesses are readily found in Michigan, causing researchers to up their game in tracking and testing tiny ticks. So they like to be in low places and under the vegetation. The same vegetation that litters everyone's yard at the edges beyond your lawn. That's where ticks live. Areas in the leaf litter, some of the bushes, that's where they're going to be hanging out. Hanging out, waiting for their next blood meal, which could come from you, your pets, or another critter in your yard. All right, little mouse. You're done. We've been sampling in this general area since 2004, but it was only in about 2015, 2014 or so that we started seeing the black legged ticks. Dr. Jean Sow is an associate professor in the Department of Fisheries and Wildlife and Large Animal Clinical Sciences at Michigan State University. She's been studying ticks for nearly 30 years. She says the black legged or deer tick is especially worrisome because that's the tick that transmits Lyme disease. To get a better understanding of the problem, I sprayed myself with DEET, tucked my pant legs into my socks, and spent some time walking the woods with her. What we've noticed is that over the years, here in this area, the tick populations have been increasing. So in, I would say about 2010, 2012, 2014, 15, there wasn't any complaints from the deer hunters. Here at the Cory Marsh Ecological Research Station, about 20 miles northeast of Lansing, Dr. Tsao and her colleagues come to collect and study this growing threat. But then, starting 2014-15, we started picking up some ticks by dragging, as well as people talking about them, uh, finding them on their dogs and such. Dragging for ticks is a simple way to sample an area. A large cloth is dragged over vegetation and ticks, looking for a host, can be captured and counted. The research team also sets traps to catch mice. Mice often carry and get fed on by ticks. And I'm just checking it for ticks. But here is a little larval tick that's almost engorged. Any ticks that are found are removed for study, but the researchers also take a small biopsy from the ear of the mouse. These biopsy punches are taken so that we can then eventually test these mice um, looking for the DNA of the pathogens that cause Lyme disease and also human anaplasmosis. After the exam, all the mice are released where they were found. In addition to dragging for ticks and capturing individual mice, researchers have become more creative, finding humane ways to catch tick-infested mice and catch their tick hitchhikers using supplies that anyone can buy at a hardware store. So these mouse houses, they are a perfect sampling device for ticks in the woods here because we don't have to do much work. The mice do the work. The mice pick up the ticks from the leaf litter, and then when they're either preening themselves or the ticks just naturally fall off because they've taken their full blood meal. When they fall off, there's a little nesting material in there. They'll fall off into there, but then eventually they'll make their way down through a funnel here. There's a grate that they're on, a funnel. Then the ticks fall down into these tubes, and we just come by periodically, a week, every two weeks or so, and we collect our sample. Her research has already found Lyme disease carrying ticks in the majority of Michigan, and if they haven't been found, it's just a matter of time. And even in areas of Detroit, where you have city parks, mm -hmm. where there are deer and also all these other critters, you're going to have those ticks eventually. Now, the latest Lyme disease risk map actually shows that southeast Michigan counties, including Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, St. Clair, and Washtenaw, all have a documented risk of Lyme disease. If you find a tick on yourself, it's important to remove it as soon as possible, because if it's a deer tick and it's removed in less than 24 hours of attachment, the risk of getting Lyme disease is essentially zero. So then that leads me to wonder, how can you tell between that black, the black-legged tick and the deer tick? Because they look, I mean, to me, they look very similar. 
So yeah, well, the black-legged tick is actually the deer tick. The issue is there are other ticks in the state. So, you know, to someone who actually is familiar with ticks, it's actually not that difficult. But to the average person, it would be a challenge. And that's important because the much more common dog tick that's actually found here in Michigan has a very low risk of transmitting any disease at all. So knowing what tick you're dealing with can be very helpful. And to help with that, tomorrow morning, I'm going to show you an app that Dr. Tsao took part in developing that will put you in touch with an expert at tick identification. Hmm. Back to you.